Hello friends welcome back to this video series on saluting women in history social reform movements have played an important role in human history and represent a powerful instrument of social change they arise because social conditions create dissatisfaction with the existing arrangements people join specific social reform movements for an almost infinite variety of reasons including idealism altruism compassion and practical consideration as well as neurotic frustration it is significant to note that social reform movements play a vital part in the process by which a social problem is brought to public attention they throw light on various social problems which have been in existence since decades and centuries modern india has witnessed the emergence of a number of social reform movements ever since the 18th century against the evil practices of child marriage sati polygamy female infanticide and of course untouchability the social reformers of various movements felt that the miserable position of women was due to the existence of social evils in the society and the denial of property rights to women therefore women have been awakened from her age long sleep and they emphasize that they are no lesser than men the tamil country known for its lofty principles like all places or ours all our kith and kin has always been a meeting ground of conflicting ideas and cults creeds and cultures races and religions which due to constant contact and interaction had led to synthesis making adjustment and accommodation inevitable for survival true to the spirit the great stalwarts fought relentlessly for social reforms in general and emancipation of women in particular this is also a good testimony to the fact that the tamil country did not lag behind in the field of reforms owing to the favorable climate created by the british administrators like lord william bentick and the western system of education the christian missionaries who came to india propagated against the evil practices and contributed a lot to the liberation of women which were monumental in nature in addition the tamil literary works and journals played a vital role in guiding the reformers to active participation i am very happy to mention here that a galaxy of social reformers and a few reform minded elites emerged during the period between 19th and first half of the 20th century in tamil nadu in order to weed out societal obstacles that stood in the way of the emancipation of women and their progress notable among them were saint ramalinga adigal mayuram vedanayagam pillai g subramanya ayyar subramanya bharathi v s srinivasa shastri thiruvi kalyana sundaranar bharathi dasan and others spoke and wrote about women's rights e v ramaswami nayakar popularly known as periyar stands unique of all the social reformers as he alone attacked for the first time the ideological basis of the enslavement of women in society the self respect philosophy of periyar refers to the assertion of one's individuality against exploitation discrimination and injustice therefore it can be stated over here that every woman of tamil nadu must remember and thank periyar as he worked for the cause of women during his seven decades of public service with a well disciplined supporters and followers lenin wrote that without the women there could be no true mass movement though the leaders of the social reform movement who raised women's issues were mostly men later on the movement was taken over by women inspired by the urge for the social uplift of their fellow sisters women social reformers of tamil nadu had organized themselves in a variety of ways in an effort to improve the status of women in the society and this video will highlight on the contributions made by the prominent women social reformers of tamil nadu 
Moogaloor Rama Mridham Ammayar. She is a grand old lady of Dravidian movement. She was a Tamil social reformer, author and political activist of the Dravidian movement and worked for the abolition of the Devadasi system in the Madras presidency. She was born in Tiruvarur and was brought up at Moogaloor, a village near Mailadudurai. She got married to Suyambu Pillai, an accomplished musician and had two sons and a daughter. Unfortunately, the first son and the daughter died at very early age. This shock converted her to atheism. She lost faith and belief in God and became a follower of Periyar. She was the author of the novel Dasigalin Mosavale or Madhi Petra Minor, written in 1936, which exposed the plight of the Devadasis. Originally a supporter of the Indian National Congress she became a member of Periyar EV Ramaswamy's self respect movement after he left the Congress in 1925 in 1930 she supported Muthalakshmi Reddy's attempt to abolish the Devadasi system in the Madras presidency through the legislation she also took part in the anti hindi agitations of 1937 to 40 and in november 1938 she was jailed for 6 weeks for participating in the agitations muvalu ramamridam ammayar was the first lady of the south to defy the government prohibitory orders for picketing liquor shops and to court arrest the public awareness created by her novel and her continuous campaign to abolish the devadasi system were instrumental in the passage of the madras devadasi prevention of dedication act or the devadasi abolition bill which outlawed the practice in 1947 in 1949 she parted ways with periyar and became a supporter of the dravida munnetra kalagam and remained a dmk supporter till her death in 1962 In her memory the government of Tamil Nadu has instituted the Moovalu Ramamridam Ammal Ninaivu Marriage Assistance Scheme which is a social welfare measure in order to provide financial assistance to poor women Muthu Lakshmi Reddy a social revolutionary and the first woman legislator in British India she was an eminent medical practitioner social reformer and Padma Bhushan awardee in India and she was the first woman legislator in British India she was born in the princely state of Pudukottai in Tamil Nadu to Chandramal and S Narayana Sami who was then the principal of Maharaja's college in spite of various constraints faced by girls in India of her times she could complete her higher education and was admitted into medical profession in 1907 She joined the Madras Medical College where she achieved a brilliant academic record and graduated in the year 1912. She expressed a need to be a different woman from the common lot and pitied women for their subordination to men and inwardly rebelled whenever she heard people say that only boys needed education. Muthu Lakshmi Reddy married Dr. Sundar Reddy when she was 20 years old. on the demand that he promised to always respect me as an equal and never cross my wishes she met sarojini naidu and began to attend women's meetings and shared her personal concerns in terms of women's rights the two great personalities who influenced her life were mahatma gandhi and dr anne besant they persuaded her to devote herself for the upliftment of women and children Muthu Lakshmi Reddy went to England for higher studies and joined in Women's India Association to enter the Madras Legislative Council and was unanimously elected as its deputy president She led the agitation for municipal and legislative franchise for women and it is important to highlight here that she was nominated to the Madras legislature as a member of the legislative council in 1926 and she became the first woman to be a member of legislature in british india muthu lakshmi reddy was considered to be the pioneer of numerous social reforms and her book my experience as a legislator 
records all her services in the legislature. She was the prime mover behind the legislation that abolished the Devadasi system in 1929 and played a keen role in raising the minimum marriage age for boys at 21 and 16 for girls. She was actively involved with several orphanage homes and women's welfare organizations and initiated measures to improve the medical facilities given to slum dwellers. In 1930, she founded Avai Home, a home for the destitute women and orphans at Besant Avenue, Adayar. As an MLC, she introduced a scheme of free education for girls up to class 8. She was responsible towards the opening a hostel for Muslim girls and scholarship were given for Harijan girls. She acted as a chairperson of All India Women's Conference and also became the first chairperson of the State Social Welfare Board. She was also a member of the Hot Talk Committee and she travelled extensively and studied the progress of women's education throughout the country. She also acted as the editor of Roshni, an important journal of All India Women's Conference. Muthalakshmi Reddy suggested to the government for opening a children's section in the maternity hospital and the Kasturibai hospital at Triplicane is a monument to her efforts. During her address at the centenary celebration of the Madras Medical College in 1935, Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy first expressed her desire to start a hospital for cancer patients and started the Cancer Relief Fund as well. As an outcome, with the overwhelming support of like-minded people, the foundation stone for Adayar Cancer Institute was laid by Jawaharlal Nehru in 1952 and today it has developed into a world-renowned institution. Muthulakshmi Reddy continued to fight for her cause till the end of her days and even at the age of 80, she was energetic and vibrant. Her human preoccupations took her away from politics in 1930 and she stuck to her mission and Gandhian ways. The Government of India conferred on her Padma Bhushan in 1956 in recognition of her meritorious services to the nation. Her two outstanding monumental gifts for humanity remain the Avai Home and the Cancer Institute. Annai Nagamayar. She was born at Tadampatti in Salem district. In 1898, she married Tandai Periyar and extended her immense support in his proceedings. When Periyar was arrested by the British in 1921 for protesting against toddy shops, Annai Nagamayar, along with Periyar's sister Kannamal and other women cadres, spearheaded the intense involvement of the women-led toddy picketing agitation at Erode. It has been historically stated that the nation had never before witnessed such an independent struggle led by women picketing toddy shops and even now this incident stands testimony to the ideology of women empowerment that Tandai Periyar always insisted and believed could help to create a new world. Annai Nagamayar staged many protests against religious and caste discriminations. She voiced for women liberation, widow remarriage, rational marriages and also emphasized against the odds of superstitious beliefs. She also held the position of the publisher of Kudiyarasu from 1930 until her death in 1933. A home catering to the needs of the orphan girls at Tiruchi Maligai was initiated by Tandai Periyar bearing the name of Annai Nagamayar which stands tall as a tribute to the noble contribution of her unprecedented services to the society. Ambu Jammal, popularly called as Akkamma, belongs to the family originally from the district of Ramnad. She was born on 8th January 1899 to Srimati Ranganayagi Ammal and Srinivasa Ayangar, a prominent lawyer and a reputed Congress leader of Madras. Married at a very early age in May 1910 to S. Desika Chari, an advocate of Kumbakonam. 
During her early life itself, she was very much influenced by Gandhi ji and greatly attracted by his constructive economic and social program. In her later life, she was influenced by her sister Subalakshmi, Dr. Muthalakshmi Reddy and Mrs. Margaret Cousins who were mainly responsible in getting her interested in social service. Since 1930, she began to participate actively in the freedom movement and also led the Satyagrahis in the foreign cloth boycott. During her association with the Women's India Association as the secretary and treasurer from 1939 to 1947, she actively worked for the abolition of the child marriage, polygamy, Devadasi system, and for bringing about legislation. for protecting women's property rights in 1947 she was the chairman of the reception committee of all india women's conference held at madras later on after independence ambujammal was also associated with the budan movement tamil nadu congress committee and the state social welfare board a loyal and true devotee of gandhi ji her greatest tribute to his memory was expressed in her founding of Srinivasa Gandhi Nilayam at Tenambet in 1948 this school is a branch of women's india association and provided free coaching to poor girls and runs a free dispensary it also had a printing press and envelope making unit and a cooperative society which provided training and employment to poor women women's welfare was at the top of her agenda and as a result ambujammal helped especially in supporting the mahila ashram a school for women that helped to teach self respect through education she was an eloquent speaker both in tamil and hindi and contributed articles in tamil magazines on women's upliftment and education she has written three books about gandhi in tamil Ambu Jamal was known for her simplicity and was a quiet unassuming and heroic personality. She had donated all her jewelry for the national movement. Akamma as she was lovingly called dressed in khadi and wore nothing but a strand of beads around her neck. The government of India conferred on her Padma Shri in 1964 in recognition of her meritorious services to the nation. Sister R S Subbulakshmi she was born at Rishiur village in Tanjavur to Visalakshi and Subramanya Iyer who was employed as a civil engineer in the public works department of the Madras presidency she got married while she was very young but her husband died soon after in april 1911 she became the first hindu woman to graduate from the madras presidency and she did this with first class honors from presidency college madras in 1912 she founded the sharada ladies union to provide a meeting ground and platform for housewives and other ladies in order to promote consciousness among them regarding social problems and to encourage them to educate themselves and the sharada illam or widows home which rehabilitated and educated child widows in madras she established the sharada vidyalaya under the aegis of the sharada ladies union and also inaugurated the lady wellington training college and practice school and became its first principal shri vidya kala nilayam a school for adult women at mailapur in 1942 was established by sister subalakshmi When she was the president of the Mailapur Ladies Club she formed the Mailapur Ladies Club School Society in 1956 which was then renamed as the Vidya Mandir School in Mailapur in addition she was involved in setting up a social welfare center for women and children in Madambakam village near Tambaram in 1954 Sister Subalakshmi made efforts to abolish child marriage and to encourage education of girls She actively supported the Child Marriage Restraint Act passed in 1930 and appeared before the Joshi Committee which formulated the act and instrumental in raising the marriageable age of girls. 
After retirement, she was involved with the activities of the Women's India Association, through which she befriended Annie Besant and others. She served as a nominated member of the Madras Legislative Council from 1952 to 1956. The government of the British Raj honored her with the Kesari Hind Gold Medal for public service in 1920, and in the year 1958, the government of India conferred on her with Padma Shri for her notable contributions to the society. Dr. Darman Bal. popularly called as Veera Tamil Annai that is heroic Tamil mother she was a social activist and women's rights activist and is remembered for her contributions to the Tamil language and thereby given the title of Veera Tamil Annai meaning the heroic Tamil mother she was born in 1890 to Papamal and Saminathan Chettiar at Karandai near Tanjavur Madras presidency Later on she married drama actor named Munusami Naidu and moved to Chennai and acted as a practitioner of Siddha medicine. Dharmambal was a great admirer of Muthulakshmi Reddy and supported her attempt to abolish the Devadasi system through legislation. She was instrumental in safeguarding women's rights and education for girls being the secretary of Tamil Women's Association. She also supported the remarriage of widows and intercaste marriages. In order to bring forth education in Tamil to the youth of Madras, she founded the Manavar Mandram, that is the Students Forum, and conducted Ilavu Varam, that is a week of mourning, to get equal pay for the Tamil teachers. Dharmambal was an active participant of the self-respect movement and was one of the organizers of the 1938 conference of the Progressive Women's Association which bestowed the title of Periyar on E.V. Ramaswamy Nayakar. She also participated in the anti-Hindi agitations of 1937 to 40. Dr. Dharmambal donated her home in Karandai to the Karandai Tamil Sangam, a language society. She was given the title of Veera Tamil Annai during the meeting held in 1951 for her contributions to the Tamil language especially for promoting Tamil language to youth through the students forum. Her memorial has been erected in Mulakottalam near Chennai after her death in May 1959. The government of Tamil Nadu in her honor introduced a scheme called Dr Dharmambal Ammayar Ninaivu Widow Remarriage Scheme in 1975 in order to provide financial assistance to the remarriage of widows EVR Mani Ammayar popularly known as Annai she was born in 1920 as Gandhimadi to Kanagasabai Mudaliyar who was a member of the Justice Party soon after her father's death she joined the Dravidar Kalagam Commonly known as Annai, she was a social activist and a politician. She married EVR Periyar and succeeded him as the president of the Dravidar Kalagam upon his death in 1973. The faith and affection of Mani Ammayar stood the test of the sharp observation of Periyar and she cautiously preserved the great treasure of the wealth of his policies and principles of self-respect. Mani Ammayar indulged in the committed service to the orphans in Tiruchi. She appeared as an affectionate mother to many others who earned for maternal love and used to instruct others not to refer to them as orphans. She made sure that she was their mother in all respects. When they attained age and completed their studies, she arranged marriage for them and settled them in life. The history of the Dravidian movement was not only the history of Tandai Periyar but also that of Mani Ammayar as she did not have any life of her own her life was only that of her life linked with the party in order to honor her the government of Tamil Nadu introduced the scheme called EVR Mani Ammayar Memorial Widow Daughters Marriage Assistance to improve the educational status of the poor girls The above discussions make it clear that the pitiable condition of women invited the reformers to decry and carry out the propagation for the upliftment of women for a long period. However, in the 19th and the first half of the 20th century, very strong and practical steps were taken by the social reformers to mitigate the social sufferings of women. 
Male and female social reformers of Tamil Nadu were the iconic figures whenever there is a talk on issues related to women and they really wanted to see women's progress in life. Women had the realization and they wanted to remove their social disabilities by the way of enhancing their social status through education. The women education brought out a number of women leaders who involved in the movement of freedom struggle. Among them, the notable freedom fighters from Tamil Nadu were Rukmani Lakshmibadi, Durga Bai Deshmukh, Anjali Ammal, Manju Bashini, Ammu Swaminathan, Krishnamal Jagannathan and Captain Lakshmi. It is important to mention here that the women freedom fighters also rendered a significant role in social work, especially in the upliftment of women folk in the society. Thus emerged a picture of indistinct faces of women in the crowd and they slowly assumed the leadership of their group building capabilities of many more in the process setting of the next stage for the fight for empowerment of women in the post independence era with all these facts highlighted in this video women social reformers of tamil nadu or the women to be given a big salute in history thank you for watching and i will see you all in the next video with another important topic please like share and subscribe to this channel